Hey everybody, welcome to the Sportsnet Fantasy Hockey Draft Kit. My name is Steve Dangle and today we're going to be talking about the top five left wingers. Our first left winger at number five, uh, we did a little bit of talking about him this summer. Artemi Panarin, noted New York Ranger. He had 28 goals and 87 points in 79 games last season. However, that was with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Now he goes over to the rebuilding New York Rangers. And those 87 points he scored with the Blue Jackets were in a contract year. Sometimes you get that, right? He's super motivated. Okay, I'm gonna make enough money to last me and my kids and my kids' kids' kids for the rest of forever. And then they just kind of coast. Or maybe now as the guy in New York, Artemi Panarin is gonna hit yet another gear. Also, referring to the Rangers as a rebuilding team, they spend a lot of money for a rebuilding team, don't they? They get the having draft picks and prospects thing, but they, they I, don't, I still don't know if they fully understand what a rebuild is. He had eight game winning goals last season, which is very good. Only 18 power play points, which isn't. But again, what separates Panarin from most of the people that we mentioned on our list so far, centers, right wingers, is that he's on another team. We talk about injuries being a red flag. Well, changing teams can be that as well. Even if you do believe in the Rangers and oh yeah, they're gonna have a good season this year, they're gonna contend for a playoff spot, will Panarin fit in right away? Maybe he fits in even better than expected. It is a bit of a wild card though. Still, when a guy makes $11.6 million against the cap, he probably can't miss. Number four, Johnny Hockey, AKA Johnny Gaudreau. Now the good thing is your fantasy hockey season will be in the regular season. Too soon, Flames fans, too soon, I'm sorry. Super appealing for Johnny Gaudreau. He played the full 82 games last season and in those 82 games, 36 goals, 99 points. Just like Artemi Panarin, he had eight game winning goals, but Johnny Gaudreau had 27 power play points, nine more than Panarin. He finished seventh out of all left wingers with shots last season with 245. Based on last season, you don't really have to worry about injuries with him. He's probably gonna be money in the bank for about 40 goals, about 100 points. You can draft Johnny Hockey knowing that he's money in the bank. Number three, you know me, big fan of contract year players, Taylor Hall. Now listen, full admission, Taylor Hall didn't have a great season last year with the Devils. Well, I should say he was all right, when he was in the lineup. He had 37 points in 33 games. That's the giant red flag. However, keep in mind, he was the reigning MVP heading into last season before everything, and I mean everything, went wrong for the Devils. But they're revamped, they're reloaded. They got Wayne Simmons, PK Subban, Nikita Gusev is a big old wild card. Jack Hughes, first overall pick. Oh yeah, that guy. So those are four big additions for them. And it's almost like they're making a fifth with their reigning MVP, Taylor Hall, because he played so few games last season. So if the big red flag was the amount of games he played, what should encourage you to pick him is that his team is much improved on paper at the very least, and it's a contract year. In the same way that Artemi Panarin, every point he got last season was setting him and his family up for generations to come, Taylor Hall is looking at that kind of contract this upcoming summer. Unless he signs his extension before the season starts, which, I mean, that just screws the whole video, doesn't it? But if you were Taylor Hall and you were the reigning MVP before an injury-filled season and then your team juiced up the lineup basically for you, would you do that? Screw that, let me go out there and score 50 goals, 100 points, and then sign for the sun and the moon. If you're looking for motivated players, Taylor Hall should be at the top of your list. Number two, Brad Marchand. Well, if your fantasy league takes penalty minutes into account, he had 96 last season, which is a lot these days, which is super rare for a guy who puts up 100 points as well. Yes, he gets a ton of points, but it's those other little categories where Brad Marchand is gonna set you apart from the pack. Nine game winning goals, 34 power play points. And he was tied for third in the NHL in shorthanded points with Patrice Bergeron with seven. I wanna throw it out there, Michael Grabner was first. What? In baseball, you hear the term five-tool player. Well, Brad Marchand is a five-tool player who happens to be a tool. I'm allowed to, I, it's my video, Drew. Put it in. It's a little bit of an anchorman situation. I straight up hate you, but damn it, do I respect you. 
If you have a chance to draft Brad Marchand, even if you don't like him, you might want to swallow your pride and do it. The number one ranked left winger, greatest goal scorer of this generation, arguably the greatest goal scorer of all time, but that's a fun little thing to argue about with your buddies. Alexander Ovechkin, noted Stanley Cup champion. I love that Nick Alberga, who came up with this list, ranked him as the number one left winger. Ah, good, we finally figured out which wing he plays on. Remember that? Of course you don't. In an era where almost nobody, save for Leon Dreisaitl last year, scores 50 goals anymore, Alexander Ovechkin had 51 last season. But remember, the decline is coming. I should also mention that he had 89 points. Listen, yes, he's a year older and he's had a full head of gray hair for about half a decade. Regression due to age is absolutely a thing for most players. Ovechkin just ignores the age curve. He had 18 power play goals, forget points, goals last season because of the Ovechkin spot. He was third in the NHL in shots because I don't know if you know this, Alexander Ovechkin likes to shoot the puck. And I don't know if your pool counts hits, but he had 223 of them. He's a video game. He has had fewer than 49 goals just once in the past six seasons. Basically, he scores 50 goals more often than he doesn't. Listen, I know red flags and age, and even if he regresses, nobody would blame you for picking Ovechkin number one. So that's it for this episode. If you want to see what we had to say about all the other positions, check out sportsnet.ca, and hey, why don't you check out the rest of the videos on this channel? You can still see my shining face. Literally shining, I'm oily, and it's the summer. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Alex Ovechkin, goal scorer. A little bit.